Gonna go ahead and get them assembled, get them put together and get these machines to use. And that looks pretty much good to go. Do need this cover plate popped off and we need to replace it with one of these 3D Farmer front plates. All right, now that I've got both of these machines set up with the farm loop system, the base and the pusher, I'm gonna ignore A1 Mini with AMS for right now because I do have something to fix with slot one. It's not feeding filament correctly, so I'll leave that for me after this video. What I'd like to do now though is get into Orca Slicer, get something set up and then show you how I go about doing this with Orca Slicer because it's different with Bamboo and Orca Slicer. If you're running Bamboo Studio, you're pretty much good to create your print files however you normally do it, download that sliced plate 3MF file and import that into Farmloop. And then once Farmloop does its thing, you can download it right back from Farmloop and import it, open it in Bamboo Studio and send it off to your printers just as you would send any other print file. If you're using Orca Slicer though, like I mentioned in the video for the P1P, you do have to pull the SD card out. So I pulled the SD card out, threw it into a little SD card reader that plugs into my computer and was able to just drag the 3MF file from Farmloop's website onto that SD card, plug it into the machine and everything is good to go from there. So that's how I'm gonna be doing it. If you use Bamboo Studio, like probably most people are doing with the Bamboo printers, you just download the file, open it like you'd open any other file in Bamboo Studio and send it like you would send any other file. Let's hop over to the computer and see how that's done. So what we need to do first is open up Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer, whichever one you choose to use. For this purpose, since I have black loaded in there, I am going to just run with the dumbbells. So one thing to keep in mind with this system is it does need some room on the back of the build plate. So any parts that are right towards the back there aren't going to fit because you have that little bump out for the pusher nozzle. So what I'm gonna do is simply remove those two back models there, and then I can drag everything down just a little bit to kind of better fit into place. There are some specifications that you can follow to make sure that uh, you're not gonna bump into anything, but for the purpose of this, this will be plenty of room in the back there. So we're gonna slice our plate like normal, make sure we've got it set up with the filament that we wanna use and with the, the build plate that we wanna use. And instead of clicking on print plate like you normally would, we can go up to this part and export plate sliced file. And when we do that, it'll allow us to come in here and download this 3MF file, which we can then import into Farmloop. So I'm just gonna call this dumbbells. We're gonna use 3MF. Then we can go back into Farm Loop and upload our files and choose dumbbells. So now we've got our dumbbells for A1 Mini set up in there. And I'm gonna go to detachment tuning. So these are the different methods that you have. You have lift mode, which again, like I mentioned before, this mode will lift the part up. So instead of just doing a standard sweep back and forth to push the parts off the plate, it will lift them up pretty straightforward. Push mode. Again, pretty straightforward, just pushes our little print head towards the models and that pushes them off the build plate, breaks them free. Then we've got that fan upgrade that I was talking about, which I don't have in here yet, but if I did, this would turn that fan on after the print is done printing to help cool that build plate down a little bit better. So we've got temperature-based or time-based. For the time-based one, if you're on the free version, it's stuck at 3,600 seconds, I believe, which is an hour, and you're, you're limited to that unless you upgrade to Pro. If you go to the temperature-based, it's stuck down to 25 degrees Celsius, which I found to be a pretty good temperature, but we're gonna test out 30 today because I think we can do pretty good with 30 degrees. And these fine parameters here, we don't need to touch any of that. We already set our build plate temperature to 65, and this is all stuff that's built into the G-code. So we can add that to Q. So now we've got our modified file there, and this is where we set how many times we want it to print out. So I know for a single one kilogram spool, for the dumbbells anyway, I was doing two runs of three loops, and that would leave me with a little bit less than 100 grams of filament left, which is not enough to do a full another loop. So I'm gonna set this to six loops. If you're on the free version of Farm Loop, you're limited to five, which is the reason I did three before, so I could run two sets of three, uh, but I am on Farm Loop Pro right now. So we'll set it to six loops, and then we can hit download. What it's gonna do now is start processing that file, configuring all of our parameters, and when it's done, it'll download a secondary 3MF file, similar to this first one that we imported, and that is what we'll use to load onto the SD cards. Again, if you're using Bamboo Studio, all you would have to do after this is go back into 
uh, Bamboo Studio, File, Open Project, and you would go and open the file that is being downloaded from Farm Loop right now. So we've got our modified dumbbells there, and I'll just show you real quick what that would actually do if we were to open that file. So it's a very large file, and we can see here this will run one day, 14 hours and 47 minutes. So it'll run six full loops using 161.11 grams per loop. Unfortunately, this isn't gonna let me send this over Wi-Fi, and I'll show you what it does here when I go to send this. It prepares the print job, looks like it's gonna do everything that it should do, uh, and then it ends up crashing, at least from my past experiences with it. Also, this is quite a large file to send. I'm also on local area network, so it takes even longer than if you were running off of the cloud. So don't be fooled by this looking like it's actually working. From my, again, from my past experiences, it does this, and then it will crash out before it finishes sending the file over. All right, I lied. Evidently, this time around, it actually worked in sending the, the file over. It took about four and a half, five minutes to send it, uh, but it, it did work. So we don't, don't even need this little adapter and we don't have to plug in and drag the file to the SD card. So if you're using Orca Slicer, maybe it's because I'm on Farm Loop Pro now, uh, or maybe they've released an update, but everything seems to be working. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again for A1 Mini 1 so I can get that one going on the same thing. So hopefully they finish up around the same time. So without having to pull the SD card out, that's pretty much all there is to it. If we had had to pull the SD card out, hopefully this one works the same way. Uh, I just have one of these little adapters, plugs into my computer through USB-C, and it's got the micro SD card slot right there. This is all set up now, doing what it's supposed to be doing. We're heating up the bed to 65. It'll heat the nozzle up to its normal temperature. And this is the exact same thing you'll see when you send any print to the printer. It just goes and does its normal thing like you would expect. So that is Farm Loop for the A1 Minis. They will continuously print out for the next day and a half, almost two days, and pretty much run through both of these spools. But at the end of the day, I didn't have to do anything but that initial setup right there. And I can just keep running this. In a day and a half, I'll come back and replace the two spools on here and restart that same exact file that we just sent over. The one for A1 Mini 1 over here that we just got set up is still sending. That's gonna take five or six minutes. But again, once it's sent over to the machine, there is no more messing around with it. I can just come back, press start, and let it do its thing for the next two days. And this cycle just continues over and over again well, you can do other things in the print farm. Instead of me having to come down every six and a half, seven hours to pull the parts off the build plate, restart the file, this system just does it all for you. Now, that fan attachment should allow me to cool the stuff down a little bit faster, cool the build plate down a little bit faster for that matter. So what might take an, a day and 14 hours right now, once that fan system is installed on here, it could potentially save us maybe half an hour on each of the loops. So if we've got six loops going, we could save ourselves a significant amount of time over the course of days printing these files out. I will also have a link in the description below to my buddy Sam over at Sam Crafts File that he designed to put on the front of your rack so you can mount a little bin to it. That way you don't have to have bins on the floor. Everything is just kind of set up in front of each machine. And I believe he's got that available for free on Maker World. So, that is down in the description below. I have farm loop links down in the description below as well if you wanna get this system for yourself. If you found this video useful and wanna see more videos like it, I've got another one queued up for you right over here somewhere. And if you wanna see more videos like it, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. That is all for this one. I will see you in the next video, folks. Take care.